What's up guys, welcome back. I'm here at Gettle Fair Buick GMC in Punta Gorda, Florida, checking out this brand new 2023 GMC Canyon. Now this is the elevation trim, which technically is the base model, but we have the convenience package. We have the four x four. We have some of the nice features on this vehicle. And today I'm gonna to take you on a complete tour of it. Starting right here in front, checking out those brand new engines, walking around, talking about the features and finishing up with the test drive. If that's something that interests you, don't forget to check out the rest of my channel. And now let's get back to this. So after about a decade with the last generation of the Canyon, we have this. It's standing nice, proud and tall and it's looking really, really good. Let's start with the design of it right here. The hood, nicely sculpted, very muscular. You have this indent in the middle of this big bulge and then two indents on the sides. And then if you scroll down here, you have the big GMC logo, big grill. And scrolling down and here you have a little bit of this matte black cladding that includes the set of fog lights right here now the lights are completely different love the lights too they are fully led they have the daytime running lights turn signals and of course the led headlights now let me see if i can blink the blinker right here to see how they work now what's changed of course is what's underneath the hood so let's pop it up and find out so let's check this out what's underneath the hood all right, first of all, I wish it had a hood struts, but now I'm going to be holding this up. Underneath the hood, you'll find a 2.7 liter four cylinder high output engine producing 310 horsepower and class leading 430 foot pounds of torque. Now, it no longer a V6 engine, and it is definitely more powerful. It's got more horsepower and more torque than the outgoing generation, but it also suffered a little bit as far as the gas mileage because we have 17 and 21 for the combined of 19. Now, all of the canyons are going to have the same engine and the same eight-speed automatic transmission, so nothing changes if you go from trim to trim. Well, before we go around this vehicle, let's talk about the size of it because it is about 10 inches wider than the previous generation one. And it is also about three inches longer. The total length of this vehicle is about 213 inches with the bed size of 61.5 inches, which is just over five feet. That's standing nice and tall. Now this is the base model with the four x four system. Now if you wanted to go with the 84 or 84 X, which is the new New model for 2023 those are going to have much bigger ground clearance bigger tires and beefed up suspension i think they have about two inches lift now what you get standard with this one is the 18 inch wheels uh, which kind of nice looking ones gmc in the middle and they're dressed in the goodyear wrangler tires 265 65 18 is the tire size i like the cladding around it with this marker light on on them as well elevation trim because that's what i have for you today and then as far as the surrounding of the windows you have all blacked out with piano black mirror right here and then you know you have the smart entry system so i have the key on me all i have to do is push the button to lock or unlock this truck gas tank is right there and you have the four by four badge on the back of the bed right here as well 
And 4x4 is optional on this track, but I would highly recommend getting it if you're planning to do anything with it. Now you have the LED lights in the back, and that includes your regular uh, lights, turn signals, and the reverse lights. You have the canyon and incorporated right inside of those lights right here and let's see lock unlock just to see how they work right underneath here you have a little step on each side to help you get inside of the bed or reach something inside the bed if you need it to gmc canyon right in the middle there the rear view camera is built into this door handle this keyhole is optional as well and so is the soft open gate now if we look inside the bed, 61 and a half, that's the dimensions of it. And if you're wondering how wide it is, well, here's a rule or so it tells you from here to here, it's about 48 inches. So it doesn't look like it's 48 inches in between, well, maybe right there, 48 inches in between the wheel wells. Now, if you look at the cab itself, it has the lighting up on top, also a, a radio antenna, and it has a, a and the glass that slides open now it's really easy to close it up and if we scroll down here you have the tow hitch that can tow up to 7700 pounds and this vehicle is equipped with a four and seven pin connector right there again elevation trim and that's what's displayed on the side so let's open the rear door and let's see what we have here all right nothing too crazy about this door panel looks like it's all hard plastic as far as the fabric the only soft portion right here is your armrest you also have the controls for the window and the door handle and that's about it and inside of it you'll find the cloth seats they are on the stiffer side on the firmer side and uh, they're kind of very straight up with no way of adjusting it so keep that in mind if you want to have passengers in the back now in the middle console you have events you also have the usb and the usb type a type c as well as down here at the bottom not sure if you can see it but there is a regular household power outlet and on the passenger seat itself you have a seat back pocket but not on the driver's side that doesn't look like it has much room but let me jump inside and see if i can fit behind me well this is it i i fit but i'm touching my knees to the back of the seat and the seat is adjusted to my regular driving position which by the way i am six feet tall i do have enough headroom and shoulder room but like i said it is sitting pretty straight up so it's not the most comfortable seating position well let's get in the front and as always let's uh, check out the sound of the closing door and that is pretty solid all right the front door panel looks a little bit better than the rear one although you still have a lot of those hard plastic materials but this portion right here is soft as well as your armrest of course and then we have the lock unlock door handle mirror window uh, uh, controls right there you have the speaker inside of this door and just a tiny little bit of storage here and a very little storage down here what we have here is the power adjustment for the driver's seat the passenger seat has manual adjustment and uh, the steering wheel is tilt and telescoping yes it's manual adjustment on that now let me jump inside and here's the interior of this 2023 canyon it looks really nice i like those big vents on the side with this trim piece I kind of wish that this trim piece was extended onto the door it would look so much better you also have the grab handles right on top and then two screens one for your infotainment system and one for the fully digital display now as far as the steering wheel just the right size nothing too crazy about a gmc logo in the middle you have the cruise control settings on the left hand side and then you have your media voice control settings and the menu settings on the right hand side the steering wheel is a leather wrapped and it's nice it's the right thickness in my opinion and it feels good to the touch as well and what we have as far as the instrument cluster is an eight inch display and that uh, you can see the speedometer right there tachometer all around it then you have the fuel gauge temperature gauge you have the 
auto settings right now as far as the all-wheel drive uh, fuel gauge compass and right now we have the temperature 82 degrees outside which i think that's understated again but you can change the display see it changes to the different views on uh, the display and that's if you want to set it and forget it then you just hit the check mark button and that's what you'll have so uh, this is the instrument cluster not much going on in here and yes. right here we have the 11.3 inch diagonal display so it's a huge update over the last generation one and there's a lot of features in here that we didn't have in the last one too well let's go one by one really quickly so as far as your audio you have the am fm sirius xm bluetooth google news podcast and usb by the way this is the google based system right here you have the google assistance if you press it it's going to ask you what you want to do we're going to turn that off right now and then you know there's a home button right underneath here so if you want to go back to the main screen here's what it is so you have google maps right here it says to use maps and provide map data to vehicle features turn on your vehicle's location review your policy controls uh, so it's asking me to go to settings i'm going to turn them on why not and we're just going to hit done on the next screen and close it and this is the first time that the maps have ever been open on this one so nice and very bright display i like it i like the way it looks it's uh, if you're used to the google maps you're really gonna love this display for sure so let's go back here as far as your phone settings you have manage phones i actually connected my phone in here so connecting right now and let's see we're gonna enable the Android Auto it's kind of interesting because this is the same phone I'm recording with so here's what's going on I tried to connect the phone that I'm recording with to the car but then it disconnected for some reason it stopped recording so I connected my other phone and it's a wireless Android Auto and right now you can see connected so we're gonna go and see how that android auto looks like so continue on your auto car screen okay we're not gonna allow any messages or anything like this i just want to show you for the sake of uh showing you this android auto all right we'll go back to map we'll go back to the music home system right here trailering we'll get to back to the android auto i promise you have the light test of course we don't have a trailer connected and the checklist which is really nice and important to help you with hitching up your trailer so this is one through ten hitch securely mounted trailer connected to hitch and locked electrical connector plugged in just kind of you know jogs your memory a little bit make sure that you've done all the steps now i'm pretty sure that if you've done it more than a few times you're going to remember that but you know i think it's a really helpful feature then there's your google assistant play store so android auto for some reason this is okay here enable and uh, we're going to connect it and there you go so this is your android auto we're going to unlock it on the phone here and this is how it looks so here's continue and this is your android auto screen again it's the first time that that's been used i like the colors on it i like how vivid this display is and overall this is a nice and responsive system so this is your android auto basically now let's go back to the home screen now you have your climate settings um, you can adjust your temperature from here you can adjust your temperature at the bottom auto sync auto recirculating button fan controls everything can be adjusted from this screen there's your settings connections vehicle apps and permissions date time display sound so a lot of customization comparing to the previous generation one wi-fi hotspot vehicle info camera okay so this is your rear view camera let's put it in reverse so then it adds the trajectory lines here's your trailer camera and this is your guide to hook it up so nothing too crazy but it's nice display the camera is good quality takes up the majority of the screen so no complaints here 
and get out of here. Here's your controls. So doors and windows, lights, drive and park vehicle settings, camera, auto high beams, front fog lights, power window lockout. You can set all of these from here. Those are the toggle switches, basically. This is an off-road vehicle, so you have your G-meter right here. You have your steering angle on the right. Right there, you can see as I move the steering wheel, the angle is changing. Transfer case is in auto right now. It is lockable. Um, I believe it is. Let's see. Let's see if we go to the 4x4 mode. Yeah, now it's uh, 4 high, and I don't see a locker here, so it's not lockable. But you have the auto mode, two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive mode. Those are the ones that are available, drive mode normal here. And then let's go to the terrain setting and let's see what we have. We have a pitch and roll. We have the tire pressure. And as far as the overlanding, we have a compass. And also we see how high or how low we are above or below in this case is it possible we're below sea level hmm interesting well, anyways let's go back to the home screen and then we have the my gmc podcast and google news everything is google based so they have to plug in their settings here so underneath here you actually have and the regular knobs to control your temperature and a bunch of shortcuts as far as your climate control and then down below here you have this one button touch one touch button for all the windows to go down unfortunately it doesn't go back up so you have to individually uh, lift all of them up you have the auto start stop button you can disable that lane keep assist auxiliary buttons and then you also have the hazard lights usb type a usb type c uh, this is no uh, wireless charging i think you have to go to the higher model to get that you have your uh, all-wheel drive or you know four by four too high or too low controls and uh, it, this is your modes you also change the driving modes through here and this is the animation that you have. You have the off-road mode. You have the tow and haul mode. Terrain mode. Normal. And back to off-road. I'm going to leave it in normal since we're not going to do any off-roading here. And then you have the regular gear shifter. With the ability to shift your gears manually with the plus and minus sign. Okay. And then you have the low range here as well. Now, electronic parking brake is right underneath this dial for the four wheel, four by four. Then we have the cup holders and a bit more storage right underneath here. This is pretty much it on the elevation. You have the regular mirror on star system. You have the illuminated mirror in the visor no sunroof on this particular one then you have to step up a notch to get it if you can get it i'm not sure so this is the interior of this 2023 gmc canyon well, let's take it on the road and before we take it for a spin as always let's take a look at what's going on as far as the pricing on gmc's website when you first enter this you see the gmc canyon starts at 36.9 but when you go to actually build one it says msrp starting 38.395 i believe that might be because it's including the destination charge but anyways as far as the trim levels you have the elevation which is the base trim level and that's what i have for you today and then you have the 84 Denali then you have the 84x which is the four-wheel drive only version includes the off-road suspension with a three-inch factory lift and ultra wide stance and you have the 84x first edition which is a very rare vehicle and I believe the order bank is filled on that but 
I think I'm gonna be able to film one relatively quickly here for you guys too so I'm gonna bring that on the channel as well so that as far as in the trim level so four-wheel drive if you choose that then it adds about three thousand dollars believe it or not two-wheel drive 38 395 and 40 one six ninety five yeah it's about uh three thousand dollars for the four-wheel drive system i think it's uh, well worth it though uh, so those are the different trim levels now the one that i have for you today has the msrp with destination and with the convenience package with the upcharge for the solar the flare metallic color preferred package and the trailering equipment package of 35 140 and i'll list everything in the description of this video so you can refer to it if you weren't sure of what's standard what's not standard on this vehicle now let's take it for a spin well we have this empty parking lot right here let's turn the wheel all the way to the right and let's see if we can make a circle of course we can but how tight is it going to be it's actually pretty tight not bad at all for the body on frame truck and let's see a little twist and turns right here let's see how that handles the body roll it's rather stiff i don't like it i mean it's definitely not transferring a lot of that roll inside the cabin which is a good thing of course it feels like nothing for this truck but i do like the suspension i do like this is it's it's firm uh, but it definitely feels very capable yeah, we're gonna go on this road right here. Yeah, I'm gonna stop and check out this uh, acceleration. Definitely powerful. You feel that power right away. Gets it up to about 60 miles, no problems here. And uh, this is definitely not a truck that you're gonna race right but it's important if you're merging in traffic and i can definitely say that it has the power to do that now the visibility is great you have this big windshield the mirrors are not huge but they're big enough to give you that a nice look of the road behind you and then of course you know if you don't have anybody uh, behind you or if you don't have anything in the bed then of course it's fine otherwise uh, i would definitely suggest getting this uh, digital mirror i'm not even sure if it's available on the elevation trim but if it is go ahead and spend the extra money you'll be thanking me later for that at cruising speeds it's really quiet but when you downshift it here's what happens boom you can definitely hear that engine and it's kind of that whiny noise i don't know what it is but anyways i think it's the turbos slowing now but overall not bad well guys we're back at the dealership parking lot let's talk about a few things that i like about it and maybe one or two that i didn't like as much first of all start with the bed right so the bed i would like to have improved is the comfort of the seats the seats are definitely on the firmer sides and i have a feeling that for the longer ride it might not be very comfortable now the second thing that i would like to see improved and i'm not even sure that's possible it's a gas mileage it's 17 and 21 with 19 combined the previous generation was a v6 it had a better gas mileage than this so that's something to improve on but everything else it's on the positive side in my opinion it's got the power it's got the looks it's got the technology overall i think it's a very nice pickup truck Forty-five thousand dollars. that's right in range with pretty much all of those uh, mid-size pickup trucks are going to be so thank you very much for watching i hope you liked it i hope you learned one thing and if you did i've done my job so go ahead check out the rest of my channel consider subscribing and i'll see you in my next video cheers